Hey guys, thanks for tuning in again. It's Dr. Becker. I'm here today to talk about everybody's favorite topic, earwax. It's actually a, something I talk about a lot in the office. And in fact, I may have even referred you to this video because we were talking together and I said, you should go watch my video about earwax. And I'll explain uh, in this video why we should not use cotton swabs or like screw thingies or bobby pins or keys or anything like that to clean our ears and um, also talk about the correct way to care for our ears in terms of keeping them clean and healthy and reducing uh, the amount of symptoms people have as well as the amount of um, problems uh, and also you know keeping them safe from things like accidents and trauma. So um, the first thing I wanna talk about in this video is how ear, the ear works and why we have earwax to begin with. And then um, I'm gonna um, talk about uh, what cotton swabs do that's so terrible. And then um, my preferred methods for dealing with the earwax. Um, so if you wanna hear about those things, then stay with us, okay? The first thing I wanna talk about is, is the purpose of earwax itself. Because I think a lot of us were brought up with the idea that earwax is dirty, that it's disgusting. In fact, some patients even say, uh, is there dirt in my ears? And we do use the ear, um, the, the, the phrase ear cleaning a lot, which sort of implies that it's dirt and that it needs to be removed all the time. And this really isn't the case. Um, I think you can think of earwax as something that your body naturally makes. It's a combination of the dead skin in your ear as well as um, the oils that are produced by the oil secreting glands in your ear canal. So the stuff that the stuff that gets inside of our ears is actually there on purpose. It's not a buildup of dirt or anything like that. Um, the reason that earwax is there, I think the main reason is paradoxically to keep our ears clean. So the ear creates the earwax to create a sticky barrier around the um, outside portion of the ear canal and thereby uh, keep, like if there's dirt or, 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 or dust or even invisible dust mites or things like that that might get in your ear, they stick to that sticky wax and the body um, is constantly extruding the wax to, um, to keep the deep parts of the ear canal where all the really good stuff is like your eardrum and your ear bones to keep that incredibly clean and healthy. Let's look at a diagram and I'll explain that some more. Here's a diagram of the external ear. Um, what you can see here is the uh, outside part of the ear, which we call the auricle. And then this uh, right here represents the ear canal, which is really a tunnel uh, that goes inside your head to where your eardrum is. So this is the eardrum here where the sound gets absorbed. So the outside hole of your ear would be about here. And this outside part where your head is would be the only place where anyone could really see. Now what the ear normally does is it has glands along the outer half of this ear canal that make earwax. And these little glands will secrete um, a little bit of oil, okay? And it makes a coating along the outer half of the ear canal surface. Now it should be noted that the inner part of the ear, this part, the canal wall is very different. I've kind of highlighted it a little bit in yellow. It doesn't actually make wax at this level. It does have a, a very thin skin lining, but the glands don't start until after this, the, there's two parts called the bony canal and the cartilaginous canal. And the, the glands don't really start until about halfway away from the eardrum. And what happens is these glands are constantly making this oily stuff that combines with some of the dead skin sloughed off of the, um, off of the uh, ear canal skin. And this skin is constantly growing outward in this direction. So what happens is very slowly over time, this earwax is going to come out into this uh, area of the outer ear where it can be easily wiped away and more wax will get made here and it will constantly be carrying everything out in that direction. So most ears, when they're left alone, they can be actually cleaned on the outside just with your finger, like maybe a tissue over your finger. You can wipe the outside of the ear here 
and that way nobody can see any wax in your ears, but what's happening inside is something that's still happening, that your body is uh, using this wax to sort of help keep this inner sanctum here completely clean. Now, you might ask, well, what happens if I use a Q-tip? Aren't I just, you know, cleaning, you know, cleaning this area? And the fact is that, you know, it's true that if you truly, truly stay on the outside of the ear here with a cotton swab, then there's not really a, pro a problem. But cotton swabs have a way of sneaking in to this area just inside uh, the ear hole, which we call the external meatus. And once they start getting in here and swirling around, uh, you know, just here in the outer half, a couple of things happen. First of all, the Q-tip or cotton swab is very irritating to the ear canal. It's very scratchy and it scratches up the skin a little bit here and it removes this protective layer that the ear wants uh, that's created for itself out of the earwax. So once that gets removed and scraped with the Q-tip, this uh, canal skin can become very irritated. The second thing that happens is, you know, when people remove some of this earwax, is sometimes there'll be a little bit of a, a like a, almost like a snow bank of earwax built up. So, you know, instead of being a smooth layer, sometimes the Q-tip will come in and push this wax in a little bit and it will become built up here over time, you know, a little bit every day, it'll become built up, built up, built up. And people will get what we call a deep wax impaction deep in their ear canal. And the problem is that this wax impaction can exist deeper than this, what we call wax conveyor belt, uh, which is this, you know, which is the natural process of skin growth out of the ear. It actually gets stuck deeper in the ear canal and the body can't actually get it out. So this will build up over time without the body being able to get rid of uh, really uh, very much of this, if any of it at all. So in some ways, using Q-tips to clean your ears actually causes a deep wax impaction that then has to be removed by a professional. So I, I will you know talk to my patients all the time about really not using cotton swabs in the ear at all in order to prevent this kind of a situation, which is something that you know almost always needs professional attention. When I talk to my patients about Q-tips, they say, I don't understand, doctor. You don't, you don't use Q-tips at all. What do you do with your ears? And I say, well, I really just don't really do anything with my ears. I usually just leave them alone. When I wash my hair and the ears are a little bit wet afterwards, I just take a tissue or even a piece of toilet paper, wrap it around my finger and gently wipe the outer part of the ear and right where my finger will fit, out here in the meatus. And I don't even recommend that people use soap or any kind of astringent to clean their ear because the ear really wants to be oily. It's an oily organ. Just the way our eyes are, you know, like to have tears and like to be moist, um, you would never go and dry your eyes every day and you, you would never go, you know, all the way up inside your nose to clean it out with a Q-tip. So you should really leave your ears alone the same way as that you leave your other part body parts alone. Leave the inside stuff inside and just clean up whatever's coming out uh, into the outer skin. Now, some people really do have a problem with buildup. So even when they leave their ears alone, they find that um, they do get some, you know, wax buildup that occasionally can become like sticky or annoying. And in those situations, I recommend that people use an over-the-counter earwax softening drop to put in their ears, allow the wax to sort of soften and melt down onto the floor of the ear canal to make the ear uh, easier for the ear to move that earwax out into the outside world. Sometimes if you feel like your ear is blocked with earwax and you use the earwax drops, you'll feel like it's getting worse. That's a little bit normal for the first day or two if you really have a lot in there. Remember, it's absorbing those drops and it's gonna soak them up. And you really have to kind of put up with that for a couple of days. But usually if you keep using them, as long as there's no pain, for five to seven days, that earwax will soften and gradually come out every time you put the drops in. So I tell people, if you really want to avoid coming into the office and getting a clean out, which is the other option, then you can just keep using the earwax drops for a few more days. Now, it may be just driving you crazy and you just want to come into the office and let us clean it for you. The most common way that we do it, if the earwax is soft enough, is we just use suction like a little vacuum straw to just suck it right out. It's 
very easy and usually not too uncomfortable, especially if the earwax has been softened. Um, I do recommend that people use some Debrox or earwax softener um, the day before they're coming into the office to soften that stuff up so it makes the cleaning very easy for both you and for me. So that's my speech about uh, earwax. I just do want to remind you too that um, using cotton swabs uh, to clean the ears can result in a lot more ear symptoms, including itchiness in the ears, that feeling of wetness in the morning, like, ugh, my ears all was wet every day when I wake up and then I have to use the cotton swab to dry it, that feeling of itchiness. Both of those symptoms actually get better when people stop using uh, cotton swabs on a regular basis and allow the wax to form sort of a buttery coating inside the ear. Uh, it's very soothing and the ear is much more happy and less symptomatic. And of course, there always is the occasional Q-tip accident where people will you know, have a scratch on their ear canal and find themselves bleeding because of the harshness of the Q-tip. Or uh, unfortunately, sometimes people will you know, have a, 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 an accident where they turn suddenly or move their arm in a certain way that causes the Q-tip to, um, to go all the way in their uh, into their ear canal and puncture their eardrum or damage the ear bones. Those are pretty rare um, things to happen, but I think you know more commonly are just the annoying uh, Q-tip use symptoms like itching and weeping that people aren't even aware um, are from actual Q-tip use. In addition, you're slightly at increased risk for outer ear infections, otherwise known as swimmer's ear, if you're a regular Q-tip user, because you've removed some of the natural barriers to infection and you've disturbed the skin a little bit in the external canal as well. So people who are prone to um, swimmer's ear or ear canal or outer ear infections really should avoid Q-tip use um, or use of cotton swabs uh, to clean or dry their ears. I think that's all I have to say today. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time.